Good morning. I am just leaving my hotel because um, I have to change hotels today in Santiago. And I'm going to meet my friends and I have my pack because I need to take it to the new hotel. And it was weird putting it on this morning. Obviously I have to carry it <laughs> until I get home. But, but I just thought to myself, wow, am I going to miss this? You know, it's like picking up a child. <laughs> um, so yeah, still lots of emotions today. Still a little overwhelmed that I'm done. Um, excited to go explore the city. There's no rain right now, but it is gonna rain later. So I might buy an umbrella. I washed a bunch of clothes last night in the sink because the laundry wasn't available at the hotel. And they're still wet, so later on I gotta go spread them out or find a dryer or something. So um, Stefania and Alberto and Rujana will arrive today. They wanted to come in in the morning instead of the afternoon. And uh, my friends Catherine and Janet um, that I met a while back are also catching up. Um, and arriving this afternoon and they booked at the same hotel as me so I'll for sure get to see them so and then um, Leonie and James and Steven were supposed to head out today to go to Finisterre but they changed their minds and they're staying one more day so it's gonna be a fun day Okay, I'm giving a, a random update. I'm getting a tattoo. And it's not, it's not random. I actually thought of this before coming on the Camino, that I might want to get a tattoo. And I've never had a tattoo, so this is actually really out of the box for me. Um, but I'm getting um, one Camino put on my foot because number one, my feet carried me here, which is freaking amazing. And I love the camaraderie of the Camino and how everyone says Buen Camino to each other. Um, it's actually like my favorite part, the connection between people, um, between pilgrims and, and the locals and everything else. So I'm getting a tattoo. Excited. or may not be freaking out right now. I didn't know it hurt so much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
This is it. It's my last day in Santiago. It's been a really, really, really emotional couple of days. Um, had to say goodbye to friends um, and deal with the emotional aspects of leaving the Camino and the lifestyle and all of the experiences behind. And I'll admit it's been way harder than I expected. Way harder. Um, I have a lot to look forward to in going home. Uh, but I'm gonna miss this a lot. And uh, when I began this journey, I remember it was the first week and people would ask, you know, do you think you'll do it again? And I was like, hell no. <laughs> And now here I am thinking, maybe there's other routes to Santiago I haven't walked yet. So, I don't know. Um, I did a little bit of shopping, you know, to get some things because I wouldn't allow myself to buy any souvenirs or anything on the way because I'd have to carry them. So I did a little shopping, um, met up with some different friends. Um, my feet still hurt. Um, they're okay once I get going, but getting up out of bed or after sitting at a table for a while, <laughs> they still really hurt. I'm wondering how long that'll take to go away. Um, it's raining, obviously. And uh, I'm going to go find some food and then I've got to figure out where the train station is. I haven't even looked yet. And I'll decide if I'm going to walk or take a taxi. And then I'll I have a seven hour train ride to Madrid. I think I have a layover somewhere. I have to change trains. And I'll get in tonight. And then tomorrow at 11, I catch my plane to go back to the United States. So, yeah. Not ready to leave. back to the square in front of the cathedral one more time before I go. Already saw two people I know. I saw Rujana from Slovakia. Got to say goodbye to her and I just saw Arnold from France and I hadn't seen him for weeks and uh, got to talk with him and he said he's never, he's this <laughs> beautiful young man and says he's never cried in his life really over anything and he just got back from Finisterre he walked to Finisterre and back and he said he's been crying for four days <laughs> yeah what an awesome experience okay I'm just again, walking to the train again again those two Oh, I, I found Klaus and Melfi. How fun! They just got yes. here yes, yes, yesterday, you said. No, right? This yes. morning this and morning. Uh, at 9 o'clock here. Yeah. So, hopefully, I'll see them again because they live in Montana. Yes, and I want your address, please. <laughs> You can 
hear me very well because I'm on the train and I've been on the train for a long time and I'm going stir crazy. <laughs> it's so hard to sit still for so long. Um, I left Santiago at 3 in the afternoon today and I don't get into Madrid until almost 11 and then I gotta get to my hotel and my hotel is 11 kilometers from the train station because it's near the airport and I really want to walk because my body is just dying to walk um, but it's gonna be late and I don't really know if it's safe um, so I probably won't do that I'll probably take a taxi so many things going through my head today just people keep asking me like let us know how this continues to affect you and um, I think it's it's uh, it's hard to put it in a nutshell. I mean, for one thing, there's there's the physical aspect, you know, and, and physically, I'm already, you know, having been in Santiago for a couple of days, I'm already missing the physical aspect. Um, the emotional aspect of being in a being in doing the exercise every day and not and not having to think a whole lot because when you're working hard you don't really think um, I find that my mind goes quiet um, so I'm already missing having that distraction there's so many things that I learned just about life um, and things that I learned from people in Spain. You know, the culture in Spain is very, very different from home, and I'll give you a brief example. I can't tell you how many times we'd go into a bar, and you could wait forever for service. Um, and the owner, or the person working there, really didn't seem to care that you were waiting. And you could wait forever to pay, and you could wait to get forever to order something else. And, and not only that, so many times they didn't have much available and in the beginning I was constantly thinking like wow these people could make more money if they would just serve people faster why don't they have more people working here why don't they have more products to offer I mean sometimes we'd go in a bar and there'd be like one thing to eat and that's all you have a choice of um, and my mind was constantly around the commercial aspect of it you know as a I guess as a business person myself, but also just coming from the States where customer service is so prevalent um, and, and such a big focus. And in Spain, at least in a lot of these small towns along the Camino, it's absolutely not. It's like they don't care if they're gonna make a sale or not or optimize their opportunities. There were a lot of places that could be little gold mines for businesses and, and no one seemed to care. And what I learned from that was to stop focusing on, you know, bigger, better, more. Um, I started to see things just for the simplicity that they were and to accept things as they were and to slow down. I started to discover that I can eat tortilla for another day and I can wait, I have time. Um, I started to slow myself down and to realize that not everyone cares about making things bigger, better, more, the best, whatever. They are happy with it just being what it is. Um, and so I started to become a lot more happy with things just as they were. Um, my happiness and my satisfaction with things became a lot less conditional, might be a way to put it. So that's one thing that I got um, out of those instances, but there's so many things that I got that I haven't even talked about on videos and I'm, I'm just trying to process them all. Um, I've been looking up online like how to reacclimate after the Camino because I was so excited to be done and go home that, that I wasn't really thinking about that, but now that I've been sitting around for a couple of days processing emotions and saying goodbye to friends, I've really been thinking about the reacclimation process and and uh, it scares me. <laughs> um, 
I really think I've changed in a lot of ways and and I worry that some of my lifestyle will be hard for me. Um, the busy might be hard, the extravagance of it might be hard. Um, I know I have to make time for physical activity uh, because just being on this train today is, is driving me insane. Um, so I'm just kind of rambling. I, ha I have so many thoughts. Um, this video has just kind of been a smattering of things over the last couple of days. I found that it was just hard to stay focused. Um, as I said goodbye to friends, uh, which the only one I got pictures of was Isabel. But as I said goodbye to friends, I had huge amounts of sadness that I never expected when I started this journey. Um, I've done lots of things in my life and I've made a lot of good friends, but the intense amount of time that you spend with people on the Camino, it's, it's a lot. It's every moment. It's brushing your teeth together. It's going to bed together. It's eating together. It's walking together. And, and I bonded really, really strong with some of these people. And, um, and saying goodbye to them was way harder than I expected. But it's, there's that, but then there's also, you know, and, and this I didn't expect either, saying goodbye to the lifestyle and the, and the way I've been living for the last six weeks. Um, and in the beginning, it was it was so different and and such a novelty and and hard, you know, to be without my normal conveniences, really hard. And then it became um, so comforting and so easy and so simple and so routine and monotonous. Um, that now going back to the complexity of life is scary. So anyway, I, I'm sure for some people this is going to seem too dramatic. Um, I think like any experience, it's hard to fathom it if you're not in it. Um, and, I, and I get that. I've had that, you know, with other people about their experiences. It's hard to, to fathom it. Um, but right now I just kind of stare into space and think about you know how am I going to do this how is this going to work how am I going to get quiet time how am I going to walk how am I going to process everything how am I going to let go of the people that I've grown to love and when am I going to do it again Oh, so much to think about. I'm excited to see all of you at home though. Really excited. Really, really excited. I have amazing family and friends. That's the, the major benefit of going home.